Welcome to the EXP Group's discussion of SEMA paper P1. Today we want to cover a few additional concepts connected to investment appraisal, one being the profitability index. This is a method which seeks to take the uh, present value discounting, the net present value calculations of, of a series of cash flows for different projects, and to rank them so that we can determine the best combination or outcome if we have um, a limited amount of funds to invest. Now, let's assume that we have a single period uh, investments and that the projects are divisible. In other words, we can invest in fractions of a project. The profitability index is taking the net, the present value of the cash flows that are uh, generated from a project. Here's the column that shows present value of cash inflows from the project divided by the investment. And clearly we want to rank our uh, various investments by the highest PI, profitability index. So while the net present value measure itself is a monetary uh, result and Obviously, positive NPVs can be invested in, and negative NPVs should be um, avoided. Uh, this method is allowing us to make a link between the present values and the investment amounts themselves, because even if a certain project has a very large NPV, we may not have sufficient amount of capital available to be able to make the investment, and therefore we have to be selective between the projects. Look at how the ranking works in this particular case. So we have four investments with uh, the NPV. If we were to rank these investments by the net present values, one can see that Angola has the highest ranking and Burundi has the next based on dollar NPVs. However, if we were to rank these investments according to the PI, where the amount invested is taken into account, we can see that the Angola investment, while it has a net present value the highest of 10,000, it requires an investment of $30,000. The $30,000 $30, give uh, rise to inflows of 40,000. Therefore, our definition of profitability, the PI, is going to be 1.33. Can we do better than that? Let's look at the other projects here. The Burundi project, which has a lower net present value, nevertheless gives you more bang for the buck in terms of creating um, a multiple of investment amount of, of 1.45 times the investment amount. In other words, the present value of inflows, 29,000 relative to the amount to be invested, is 1.45 times. That's better than Angola. Same is true for both Chad and Djibouti. They have higher PIs, and therefore, in terms of rankings, we would want to uh, put our scarce uh, capital resources into Djibouti. That's number one. That requires 10,000. In this example, we have 25,000 available. So if we put our 10,000 into Djibouti, we're left with $15,000. We look at our rankings again. Number two investment would be Burundi, which requires 20,000. We can't, we don't have enough to do the entire investment, but we, if it is a divisible project, then we could invest in three quarters or 75% of the project B, Burundi, in order to maximize our uh, net present values from the project. We can also change the conditions and say, okay, if we, these were non-divisible projects, how would we uh, come out with the, uh, the optimal combination of projects? Then we would have to test um, different combinations of these projects uh, in the case of non-divisibility. In other words, we're talking about capital rationing here. The candidate needs to make a distinction between Soft rationing, which is basically internal 
self-imposed limitations on projects by which a company may, may impose. In other words, the company may have access to capital to carry out the project, but it chooses not to do so because the project itself may uh, not uh, be within the core business of, of, the, uh, of the company, or it may be rejected on other grounds from the question of image, or possibly due to other scarce resources such as management or specialist skills, whereas hard rationing would refer to an external market-imposed constraint on the access that a company has to capital. Um, in summary, what we're saying is that although we have reviewed a number of different investment uh, appraisal uh, methods, as senior managers, one has to keep in mind the non-financial factors which also enter critically into determining whether investment uh, is acceptable or not to a company. And here are just some of the criteria which a company would seek to impose in order to uh, make a final determination whether it should uh, initiate or embark on a certain investment or not. A natural follow-on to the investment appraisal um, uh, topic is, of course, the issue of dealing with uncertainty in analysis. Uncertainty is, is extremely important. We deal with uncertainty in different ways, but first we need to make uh, a basic distinction here between risk and uncertainty. These are often used um, as being equivalent, but for our purposes, risk is going to be uh, taken as a quantification of probability, whereas uncertainty means we simply do not have the uh, empirical track record, the experience to be able to put numbers on the unknowable. It's also referred to as a subjective probability or unmeasurable unme um, uncertainty. Um, this is a formal distinction between the two. In terms of dealing with risk and investment in appraisal, I think the candidate will have appreciated that using a higher discount rate um, on future cash flows reflects higher risk and therefore reduces those cash flows to lower present values. So that's one way of being able to deal with notions of risk. Another way of doing it is to run uh, sensitivity analysis on the cash flows and to say what happens uh, taking each variable separately and in turn stress testing the discounted cash flow and say how bad does that variable have to get in order to bring to eliminate the net present value of the project for example revenues how far down do revenues have to go in percentage terms before the npv is equal to zero or with certain categories of costs how far do they have to go up percentage wise until the net present value is reduced to zero. That's sensitivity analysis. Here's an example of, um, in, in numerically, of this impact, the kind of sensitivities that one could uh, Im impose or operate on these cash flows with. We see here the initial cash flow projection gives us a positive NPV of 4,224. And now we can stress test the, um, the cash flows with various sensitivities, how far the investment amount would have to go up, as well as the cost of capital, or how far sales would have to drop. These are the questions that we ask. With scenario analysis, the scenario analysis is a slightly more sophisticated form of analysis in the sense that instead of isolating single variables and seeing how far those variables have to move to eliminate our our uh, net present, a positive net present value of the scenario analysis is looking at groups of variables under the headings of different scenarios. And it's not uncommon for people to define a pessimistic scenario. In other words, if everything goes into decline or an optimistic scenario or perhaps a realistic scenario and to see what the impact will be on the outcome by uh, making certain assumptions about how the variables are likely to move. Simulations goes even a step further. It's using computer modeling 
to be able to repeat uh, in, in sort of a, a random way what happens to, to the outcomes if we repeat, um, if, if we test run our variables on a repeated basis, possibly with some kind of randomness um, being incorporated as well, so as to produce a, uh, a probability distribution of outcomes. Another financial technique, uh, a quantitative technique, is called the expected value, which is defined as as the product or the multiplication of the probability of a given outcome by the value of that outcome. And that's best seen in the following example. If you take um, a series of possible profit outcomes or a loss, notice in this case there's a loss shown here, and different probabilities of these different outcomes that add up to 100%, we can multiply these across and add up the numbers to get an expected value of 4026 dollars that's plus another um, type of question which may come up is to determine the expected value of a two year project which requires $100,000 uh, investment scrap value of $5,000 and the expected cash flows are uh, years 1 and 2 60,000 in each of the two years with a probability of 60% and 50,000 with a probability of 40%. Again, the conceptual, um, from a conceptual point of view, the uh, application of the uh, expected value uh, method is straightforward in this case. I leave it up to the candidate to determine the shortest possible cut to take in, in getting the answer with a minimum of um, time spent. Thank you.